Jim's collection. Okay. It's got to be Jim's. Jim's. Some of this stuff has been in here before, years ago. It's being transferred to a new owner. Um, we'll start with the jet. Your guesses are all wrong. Uh, the label on it, what I put on the sheet was a, a Canadair CL41K. It started out as a CL41 trainer. I added a few things, an extended jet pipe, uh, chaff and flare dispensers, pylons, tip tanks, a gun underneath, drag chute, radar warning to receivers. And basically, I had fun. You don't have fun, what's the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, hobby boss kits. I like hobby boss kits. They haven't got much for the interior, most of them. But the exteriors look pretty good. The paneling's nice, uh, with a couple of exceptions. They go together quite easily. They haven't got much of a cockpit, just something that looks big, like a little chair and a little pin sticking up. So what I usually do is just frost the canopies. Although this one, I just decided to stuff a pilot in that I had lying around. This is the Mark 5B. They, they only have two Spitfire kits. One is a Mark 5B European, and the other is a Mark 5B Trop, which is that one with the clip tips and the, uh, and the big Wait. tropical filter. This one I put a little bigger Vokes filter on it just because I wanted to. This came out of the spares box. Uh, the landing gear doors come out of the spares box because for some reason Hobby Boss did not give you the landing gear doors. Uh, I goofed on the wings in that I never didn't really think about it, but I shouldn't have put the stars on top. They also have, Hobby, Hobby Boss for some reason, has the little gun vents underneath the Spitfire wing, and the, little, the gun vents and the machine gun, gun gas vents are triangular, and I could have just sanded them down to something close to scale because the way they were molded onto the wing, they were about this long and about this high, and just huge and horrible, so I just cut them off. you make that stand? Yes. The stand is uh, one of those cheapskate specials. Yeah, it looks like Dollar an Tree. old wine It is. Classic. Yeah. You get half a dozen of those for a buck at Dollar yeah. Tree. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful stands. <clears throat> make as many as you want cheap. Uh, the other Hobby Boss, I thought it was right, this one. No. The Martins came like with a kit. The Martins came with a kit. Again, I had to dig up some wheel, uh, wheel covers out of, the, uh, out of my spares box. The pedo tube, again out of the spares box. But it's not, it doesn't really look too bad, you know. It comes out looking like a Spitfire. Uh, Except for, it kind of falls apart like a Spitfire too. Well, I never glue the props on because when you transport them, <clears throat> I seldom glue the props on, let's put it that way. You have to be a lot more careful transporting them. Are they French markings? No, actually, mm -hmm. uh, they're Commonwealth markings. Mediterranean markings. Yeah, it's, it's desert, in desert Air Force. And the markings are for Canadians, for an RCAF Canadian, okay. squadron. Or I should say, a Canadian squadron in the RAF. Yeah. This is the old Frog Mark 14E. It came with a, it was a, a dual kit. It came with a, a buzz bomb, a V1. It was the only E-wing Spitfire available at the time, which is one reason I bought it. And it actually went together reasonably well. With a little bit of work, you can make a decent looking Spitfire out of it. At least it looks like a Spitfire. It was fun. <clears throat> this actually had a basis in reality. The Israelis were trying to work a deal with the South Africans for some P-40s and with the French for some P-47s. Both deals fell through. But I had a P-40 lying around and I thought, oh, what the hell, what do we do? So I did it in the desert, <laughs> again. I did it in the desert scheme and painted, I put, first of all, I put the, uh, the RAF roundels on, and then I painted over them and slapped the Star of David over them. Uh, I figured as an exercise just in why not, I deleted the outboard guns, put a patch over the shell ejection slit for the outboard guns, put bomb racks on them. I figured the Israelis had probably might have thought of just trying to save a little weight and a little expense, get rid of two guns. So what they were going to use them for, 450s were fine. The bombs and the racks, of course, just came out of the spares. It was fun. It went together reasonably well. That, uh, what does it say on the... I got, I got, it, I got it right here. Um, 
It says Wang Chao it's, P2. It's a kit bash Wang Chao P2. Yeah, well, there's no such thing as a Wang Chao P2. But I had fun going there. So my anyway. cousin's that. What? <laughs> right. It was a... Uh, Ravel used to make the... Uh, <laughs> used to make a, an F4U a Corsair kit, an F4U1D, that was mm, fairly awful. <laughs> it, had, it had the underwing pylons, and it had rockets, and it had the rocket subs molded <clears> on the wing. And the wing didn't look too bad. The fuselage, on the other hand, was way off. But the canopy could be cut open, and it had more it had the beginnings of a cockpit in it. So I did that, put the fuselage together. The uh, fuselage, vertical, and, and tailplanes are the uh, Revell F4U. The wing came from a Tester's Dauntless kit. The engine came from a Matchbox B17. Uh, bomb racks under the wing. Guns, I just drilled holes in the leading edges and gouged a little shell ejection slits underneath. And I had some Chinese markings lying around from a, an I-16, and I thought, sure, why not? It was fun. It's the second one I built. I couldn't find it. I, um, later on, after I had that together, I acquired another Dauntless, which had the wheel wells and everything, which would have been much better looking, but c'est la vie. But like I say, uh, you build to please yourself. Nobody else really matters. Yeah. <coughs>